I'll start with you. Actually, let me start with you, Pat. Right. Do you remember what was your like your first musical memory in life? Barry Manilow. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Big this hugs. one's for you. <laughs> wow. Like his face on the cover yeah. is huge. I don't know why I liked it, but I was like it was pretty small. Nice. Yeah. It was yeah. unavoidable also. Yeah. You know. You like the even now album? That's the that's the one. Nineteen seventy eight. It all sounds like a seventies movie to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I love it. <laughs> yeah. The same mellow Woo. intro and yeah. Exactly. Don't so get me started. you mean purchasing that record or just I don't know how I got it, but I got it. My my brother and sister are much older than me. They're they're like in their early seventies now, so they would leave records lying around. Triple down. Like, oh here's weird Neil Young record, here's, you know, the Who, Quadrophenia, all this stuff. All right. And I just thought they were great to throw, you know, as a little kid. As Frisbees. <laughs> yeah, they're just, yeah, this is whatever. But eventually I, I started listening to it. Stuff like Van Halen, then I got into on my own, or like Rush. Right. Yeah. And that's when I, you know, got into rock more. Where were you born? Buffalo. Okay, okay. Buffalo, New York, upstate. Nice. All right, Rivers. It's okay. What was your first uh, musical memory? <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> First cool. memory would be um, listening to my dad play the drums. Okay. He was a jazz drummer, so it would have been him and his buddies jamming. And, Who did he play with? Uh, Wayne Shorter. Wayne Shorter. Yeah, right. yeah he, he, he made it onto a Wayne Shorter session in, in 1970, right, right here, I think, in Manhattan, Manhattan or Brooklyn. Uh, okay. And, what was uh, your dad's name? Frank Cuomo. Okay. Um, so Not Francis. Actually, legally, it's Francis. Yeah. Mm. How, did that? How did you know that? I just. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. We're in a band together. <laughs> so your father playing drums around the house—that was your first musical memory. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really. You know, I read this interview long ago. We described. I guess uh, the discovery of Kiss was your kind of come to Jesus moment. Yeah. It's so weird that you actually listen to the music. I was obsessed with Kiss, but only as to whenever we would go to like uh, department stores or whatever, like Sears, I would immediately beeline for the record section and just stay there for like the two hour duration while they're shopping around. And I was obsessed over these record covers, but never listened to the music. So like, I think my first experience was Love Gun Christine 16, but for yours, like, what was it about you actually listened to the music? Like, I just got as far as the cover, and that was it. Try to imagine what they mm. sounded like. Yeah, well, so when I was five or so, my, my family moved to an ashram, and mm -hmm. we were pretty cut off from pop culture at that point. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of, like, Sanskrit chanting. That, that was my main music experience at that point. Um, That's but what I listen to now. <laughs> <laughs> but there was some uh, some hippie music too. I remember Cat Stevens, Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, that kind of stuff. I would hear those records. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was this one girl who was my age. Who, she came and visited the ashram. Her name was Shanti, and she had Rock and Roll o Rock and Roll Over by Kiss. Mm -hmm. So it was probably seventy seven. And she poisoned the whole ashram with that. She <laughs> she <laughs> accidentally left it. it <laughs> <laughs> and and it we, all went downhill. we put it on the record player and we had like a little cassette player also so we pressed record and tape it as as the record was going and so then i had a recording of this record and that's, that's the only kiss album i had at that point right. it's really the only kind of rock or intense music i had um but we would listen to it over and over but it had the sound of my brother and i running around the coffee table in circles over and over, like l spazzing out as we're listening to this rock oh music. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's what I listened to for a couple of years. And then then I started going to record stores myself exactly like you did, and I went straight to the K section to find the Kiss albums. And, like, the, yeah, this is incredible. Now, cut to my mom in 77 saying, Honey boy... <laughs> That's the devil's music. <laughs> that's that's kids in Satan's snare. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I got to add to the story. Um, I don't know if you guys know this story. So, you know, I grew up. Uh, my father was like a, a doo-wop singer in the 50s. 
So by the seventies, he's going through his what I can call like the the uh, revival phase, oh, like, like whatever seventies, fifties, yeah, Happy exactly, days and shit. And so, yeah, anything that had remotely to do with doo-wop music or you know the revival of American Graffiti, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Grease, all that stuff. My dad was a part of it, but somehow, like, he got off that circuit and sort of pivoted to just a regular nightclub act, um, of which in the 70s, if you're looking for a good time on, you know, a weeknight or whatever, you go to your local Holiday Inn and somewhere in the bar there's, you know, some legend of yesteryear playing. So, uh, weird enough, this is in Buffalo, New York, 1978. And I guess the, the, the protocol of the day is that Axe would stay at the airport hotel always because it's right next to the airport. And we did about three weeks at this, uh, at I think a Sheridan in Buffalo, of which, you know, Boston came through. Yeah. Uh, the group Kansas oh, yeah. also came through. A lot of city and state names. Yeah, names. exactly. <laughs> um, but one particular night, it was on a Friday night, and all I remember was, th- this might have been 79, I remember Dan Hartman was just did his second song on Midnight Special. It was like the whatever the follow-up song was to in- Instant Replay. I think a song called This Is It. So he does it, and the credits are going up. And I was thirsty. It was like, I guess like 1.30, 2 in the morning. And I go on the, uh, I go to the dresser, uh, grab 50 Cent to get a soda, and I walk in the hallway. Now, this is a circular hotel. And I walk in the hallway to the soda machine, get my soda, and then the elevator, bing, opens. Now I'm eight years old, and that entire album cover artwork is now <laughs> coming to life. Like it's it's fucking Chris and Ace and Paul and Gene and their bodyguards in no kind of post makeup. <laughs> that fuck you up. So it's a circular hotel. All I remember was I looked and I screamed. And I ran to the right, but the thing was, I actually ran past them twice. It was Satan, literally. Ascending. So they were performing there for three days, and, you know, instantly. It, it was like elation, curiosity, but mostly terror, because also I saw Kiss Meets the Phantom. Mm. Oh, my God. Which, as an eight-year-old, like, that totally fucked with me. I mean, now it's a total camp film, but um, the next day... I remember going to the game room in, in hotels, all the arcade games and pinball games. would They would have arcades inside of those hotels. And I remember going down there, and it was ju- it's, it's like something out of Almost Famous. Like all these women, like seeing uh, Paul without his makeup on and Gene, and they signed autographs and whatnot. And that was like, and someone gave me a Christine 1645. Oh, dude. And that was kind of my <laughs> my kiss induction. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, wow. but core memory. As I got older, I was taught to that that's not. You know, I'm listening to older generation. That's not real rock, like you know, that's camp rock. But what was it that spoke to you? Yeah, it's it's weird because uh, I know I know they're they're not supposed to be the most credible rock act of, of all time, but. They sure seem to inspire a lot of kids our, our age at that right. time, and a lot of us went on to to start bands ourselves. So I'm not sure what it was, because in my case, I didn't have the visual; it was just the music. I mean, I had seen briefly the album cover, but it's just this weird kind of abstract thing of their a design of their faces. I didn't know what they looked like or what the costumes were, or about the pyro or the production. I just had the music. And that was enough to completely get me excited. It was it was the sound of the guitar, the intense riffage, right. and <laughs> the the um, the sound of their singing. Mm-hmm. Paul Stanley going up into that falsetto. I didn't I didn't understand what the lyrics were at all. 
Have you ever met them? I was going to say, have you met them and have they broke your heart yet? <laughs> have they broke your heart? Recently, we met them. Yeah, we. Uh, I met them a couple times, but recently we just played. We opened for them. They asked us to open for them at their wow, last wow. show in Australia. So we're Gene like, was sure. nice. He. Uh, it was, <laughs> he uh, we were. I was so excited. This will be a first. But go yeah, ahead. We, was yeah. Gene nice? <laughs> we. I guess it. they were in this. Uh, they were doing this big meet and greet with all these fans, and and uh, they interrupted the line to bring Weezer in there and say hi. And I was so excited. And they're they're so tall. They're like seventy seven feet tall in right. these big heels. Mm -hmm. And I went up so expectant, and and Gene saw me, and what did he say? He was like Rivers. Rivers, you're gonna be famous in jail. That's a quote for the ages. Yeah. You'll be the most famous guy in jail. And you were like, what does that mean? He's like, it doesn't have to mean anything. I, and we to like, this what? day, I'm still puzzling it over. Like, what does that mean? And it sounds it's so significant, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it's kind of weird now because, yeah, like when I've seen him a few times and, you know, he's been to the Tonight Show, whatever. And, and it, he kind of talks like, uh, who's the comedian Jackie? Uh, Jackie oh, Jackie Mason. Mason. Jackie Mason. Oh, Jackie <laughs> like, Mason. it's, it's. Yeah, yeah. Like he, no, he was trying to be funny. And he has a cat land, skills level. Like, I wasn't used to that. Like, yeah. And, you know, but everything was. <laughs> did it. Tss. Yeah. I was like, is this Gene Sim the Gene Simmons that I've heard it? Like, that sort of thing. But, yeah. But the other time I met him was probably around 2000. Uh, it was some private movie screening, and he sat next to me. And I remember the one thing he said was just whatever you do. Make sure you screw over your hardcore fans. Because <laughs> he's really giving you some notable quotables. <laughs> right. Don't listen to them. They're going to lead lead you astray. They want you to stay the same. Uh, and was the and you're like, well, you know, I liked it when you guys wore makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. 